So the good part about dealing with all the various frustrations and difficulties and um, stuff like that of living here is I get to eat this for lunch slash breakfast because all I've had today it's like 12 30 and all I've had is black coffee this is gonna help calm me down a little bit and this is deer ribs which I roasted in the oven I just coated them with um, olive oil and salt and pepper which is what I usually do with them it's so good there's hardly any reason to do anything more fancy I roasted this in the oven just in an open pan until it was cooked and then I put in these um, coccoli mushrooms kokora um, which are up right now and I should be out you know I need I feel like I need to get out today and pick these because they go bad really fast and they're up right now I mean I found a bunch yesterday I saw some more last night and I just know if I don't get out today every day I don't get out I'm losing the opportunity to gather pounds and pounds of these and put them in my freezer you know I either gather my food and eat really well like this or I have to like make money and buy the food so one or the other <clears throat> so even if I don't get my dishes done today don't clean up my house, don't do all the many other things I need to do to just get by easier. I'm going out to get these mushrooms if at all possible. And anyway, so I tossed these mushrooms in the grease at the bottom. When I was done, added some more olive oil, more salt and pepper, a little bit of cumin, and some, you know, just whole chilies and roasted that in the oven for a few minutes. Um, and it's good. It's really good. So that's nice and sharp now. Okay, ready to go. Probably won't even use this. I just feel naked without a, a chopping or um, a large knife or a, a hatchet in the woods. So we're gonna go out and see what we can find. Again, this is kind of an emergency at this point. It's like the mushrooms do not wait for an old man. So I gotta go get them right now. There's already ones that are too far gone. There's new ones coming up. This is the time right now. I feel like I'm right in the middle of the season. If anything, I should have started earlier to get some of the early ones, but this is a really, really good time. Like I feel like maybe the next two days, maybe a little bit more, but are, are gonna be kind of right in the peak of the season for the Kokora, um, also known as Kokoli. And we're gonna go get some of those. And I said I was gonna go mushroom hunting, but I'm really gonna go mushroom collecting because I know I'm gonna find some Kokoras. It looks like it's a great year. And, um, well, we'll see if we're right. I don't want to get too cocky here, but <laughs> I'm pretty much going to pick mushrooms. Already, just a, a, you know, less than a minute in, I found this small tan oak tree, which just broke off. You can see there. But these are all oyster mushrooms. So these are, you know, not daisy fresh. They're a little bit old, uh, but they aren't browned and curled. They don't look rotten. They don't look super buggy. Some of them are a little bit younger like these. You know, I'm definitely going to pick them. I'm just not going to pick them on the way out because they're right near my house. And if nothing else, they can be used to make stock, like a soup stock, uh, which I could even freeze. I'm not sure if I've done that before, but I might try it now because it just makes sense. What if I made, you know, a concentrated mushroom stock with, that was just full of flavor? You know, I could saute the mushrooms first to give them more flavor or roast them in the oven coated with oil and then concentrate that down and, and um, freeze it in you know very small jars and then use those whenever uh, yeah that could be really good so we'll get these on the way back so here's our uh, small creek with all the pretty fall leaves those are maple leaves and all the trees up here and these trees are a high percentage of tan oak that's what this mushroom is growing on right here the oyster mushroom and it's also the favorite tree for other mushrooms to associate with. Uh, most of the mushrooms that I eat are associated with the tan oak roots. Uh, they have like a relationship with the tan oak roots. I'm guessing that most of these, if not all of them, will be dead within five years. Yes, that is very sad. But there's no stopping it, I don't think. And um, it's just whatever, you know, life goes on, I guess. So I'm looking for certain visual things in this chaotic, um, busy environment. Look how busy it is. Like there's just so many different textures, colors, shadow, light. And I'm just looking for these little, you know, cues, especially with the Kokora, which is coming up now. It, um, 
it may just be coming up to where it's just pushing a mound of dirt up or there's just a little patch of white showing. It's a matter of covering a lot of ground and just constantly scanning for these little, certain little things. Always hoping that right around the corner there's going to be a big patch of mushrooms. Okay, I know where I am now. This is an old skid trail right here for skidding logs out. Yeah, I'm going to go uphill further and then switch back on my way downhill. I'll do switchbacks. Here is a beautiful Kokora mushroom. This is a choice edible mushroom, quite large, as you can see, and meaty, and beautiful, and very tasty. A lot of people won't eat these because they're related to some very poisonous mushrooms, really related to the mushrooms that kill people the most often. But um, they're well worth learning to identify if they grow in your area because otherwise you're passing up pounds and pounds of amazing food. This is a mushroom that comes with its own cleaning pad. Let's pull that off. Look at that. And pull this off. I don't want all this dirt in my basket full of mushrooms, right? So I'm just clean it in the field. Get most of this stuff off. Here's an example of a mushroom that looks a lot like a Kokora. It's in the same family, Amanita, but it definitely is not. First of all, instead of having a solid patch on the top, it has this broken up little spots almost. You see, it's not a thick white patch. Also on the stem, it has all these little hairs, pretty distinctive hairs, and it doesn't have this really strong cup at the base. There's a little one that was growing at the base. It doesn't have this really strong cup, you know, like the Kokora has a really strong cup. And um, I don't know which one this is, but my guess is it's probably one of the poisonous ones. Anyway, it's not a Kokora. I think these little puffballs are edible. They're a stalked puffball, as you can see. There's some more right here. So if they're young enough and they're an edible species, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I've eaten this one before. I know I've definitely seen it before. Um, we're gonna, let's cut it open and take a quick look. So it, we want it to be white all the way through, which it is, except maybe right at the base there. And to smell, you know, mushroomy and pleasant, which it does. It doesn't smell like chemicals or phenol or anything weird. It smells like a yummy, tasty puffball. Um, I think puffballs are delicious. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna pick all these just in case they're they're good. And I, I believe that they probably are. We'll just have to double check that when we get home. Okay, if this is what I think it is, it's a good sign, which would be a queen bolete, except it really looks like it's been attacked by another fungus, like a mold or another fungus, and it, it just feels spongy. But if it is a queen bolete, that's an excellent sign. It's young, which is good, because as soon as they open, the bugs are like all over those things. And uh, there may be more, and I would just love to get a good year. I've had one good year in 10 years where I could really dry like a whole bunch of these. Um, look at all these. This is where the logging company that owns this land coppiced all of these trees. They cut them off as stumps low to the ground. Anyway, I wanted to come in here because it's just really dense. I don't, I don't know. It's just really, really dense in here and there's lots and lots of tan oaks. And already, I just walked in here and I am already rewarded. Let's go see what we have. This is a queen bully, no doubt. Pretty damn sure. Um, we'll double check when we get home. And it is also attacked by the same fungus, but now we know for sure. Look at that. So half of the mushroom is attacked by this white fungus. Anyway, um, another great sign. Two queen bull eats, and there's some more stuff right next to here. Not even the same species, although I think there's some of that. Yeah, there are more queen bull eats, or whatever they are. <clears throat> We're a little late to the game on some of them. So this one here is attacked again by the same fungus and it's making it kind of feel spongy and waterlogged. 
And I think I'm just gonna leave that one, yeah. Look at the flesh, how messed up the flesh is. It's all brown and soggy. But right next to those even, there's more Kokora. These aren't very huge ones, and they're kind of like small button stage. They're really, really good at this stage. The only reason I wouldn't pick them is because they're, they'll get bigger and I'll have more mushroom. But I'm way up here in the woods on the ridge, so I ain't, uh, I ain't coming back here just to pick these tomorrow when they're bigger. So that's exciting. I am gonna really hunt this area because I found two choice edible mushrooms within 16 inches of each other and a whole bunch of them. So we'll be crawling around through this thicket. I see some more way up in there. Okay, so finally I found a really good specimen, a really good bully, nice and clean and beautiful and firm. This is pretty much the perfect stage that hasn't opened all the way. It's very hard, very, very hard and firm, um, which is classic, you know, for these really choice edible Porcini bolites. I'm just really hopeful we're gonna find more. I think we may have hit the mother load here. I've spotted a couple more mushrooms just sitting here looking around. Hopefully we've hit the mother load. And I feel like now that I'm up on the ridge, like way up on the ridge, uh, something has changed. Okay, so let's, let's get moving here. We don't have so much more daylight left. Yes, we are in Bolitesville. Unfortunately, this fungus seems to be rampant. That one's toast, totally attacked by the fungus. Something has already pulled these up. Can you see how uh, eaten out and pithy that looks? That's because it's literally been completely eaten out by bugs. It's just a mess. I may collect some of these type of messed up mushrooms, but look, look how bug eaten that is. Can you see that? It's a mess. Oh, yeah, look at these. Uh, something's been in here just, you know, munching on them and tipping them over. Look at those two big fatties in there. These are called porcini, which means pig. Because they're all fat and chubby and tasty. Look at these suckers to give you an idea of how big they are. Look at that. Solid, firm, hopefully no bugs in there. But I am stoked, man. I'm gonna spend some serious time out here. Here, there's another one right there. And now that I'm in a really good zone like this, like I'm gonna traverse this really carefully, you know, and really look like only maybe 10 feet to each side and just really scan it carefully because otherwise I'm gonna miss some of these and there's a lot of them in here. And there's a little opening here. You can see it out, see the light out there. So I'm just... <clears throat> Cruising out there, I've definitely gotten out of my mushroom zone and I'm still kind of just traversing to make sure I don't hit another one. Um, kind of on my way back to that that first one, because look at look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I want that thing so full that they're falling out on the way home. This is like an old logging road here. This fern right here is called Woodwardia and it grows where there's water. So that means that there's water underneath here. It could be a year round spring, or it might just be that the soil is really wet all year long. Okay, looks like I'm getting back into my porcini zone here. Look at that beauty. Very nice. Yeah. So here's a Kokora. It has the, the thick white cap. Um, very obvious cup at the base and more of a yellow coloration. And don't use me as, as an identification guide to mushrooms or you're that, don't do that or you're an idiot <laughs> and you'll die, you're gonna die. Get a mushroom book. I made the right call, I made the right call. I would say that today, yesterday and tomorrow are the peak of the porcini season, which pretty much means today is kind of the peak uh, somewhere around there, but basically I'm almost out of time. So I only have so much time to get these. I'm gonna stop talking and stop making little video segments and just haul ass because it is getting darker and darker. I have no flashlight and I have, you know, 15 or 20 minute walk home. And I wanna get as many as these as I can today. I'm back into the zone here. 
So as I go through, I'll jettison some of these mushrooms that I pick that are not as good or just stuff that aren't as gourmet as these and that I can pick all season because these, this is it. It's just this little bit of time. And I also picked up some trash. I probably would leave that trash in the woods if it meant I could get more of these. Um, and I did bring a bag too, but bags aren't very good for carrying mushrooms. So my feeling is I'll probably just end up piling this as high as I can. In the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just going to zip through here as fast as I can and go home. And tonight will be basically like movie TV marathon cleaning mushrooms. And I'll pretty much dry all of these porcinis except what I eat, you know, fresh right now, which is like one maybe tonight. Okay, see ya. I was up till about one o'clock last night processing mushrooms. These are the porcini, uh, the boli, queen bolites, and they have four trays like this drying. You, know, you can see scale there with my hand. This is the second best year I've ever had with these. And the kokoras uh, and the oysters, I sauteed in olive oil with some salt and then froze them in jars. Um, I use these small size half pint jars so that's about enough you know to make a dish like one meal and i can just get them out and thaw them real quick and throw them in so i just want to show you this real quick and see if i can cut this with one hand this is a kokora in the button stage the kind of the dummy rule is you don't eat mushrooms in this stage because you don't know what they are because you can't identify um you know which species they are and that you should always cut uh, puffballs open to make sure they're white inside and don't have a mushroom lurking in there because you can imagine if this was quite a bit smaller, it could easily be mistaken for a puffball. But, you know, I'm gonna eat this because I know it's a Kokora. Um, I'm confident in that. So again, with the dummy rules, it's like, yeah, I mean, they're there for a reason and um, that's fine. But, you know, we take calculated risks every day. So this morning I'm going back out, I'm going to take my camera and uh, we'll have a nice video of just running around hunting mushrooms, I guess. Center screen right there. That's uh, like a lion's mane or a bear's head or something in that group of mushrooms, but I definitely want that mushroom. It looks a little bit old, but my guess is it's probably still pretty good. Man, I can't believe the camera battery died right when I started climbing that tree. So I missed the whole thing. But anyway, I was able to shimmy up that tree um, like a bear and pull down this. This is a bear's head or lion's mane, one of those mushrooms in that group. Um, I've, there's a couple that grow here, this one and, and one other one that I eat. And uh, they're good. This one's definitely a little old. You can see the tips are browning up. But, it'll, you know, there's always soup. Right. Well, here's something of interest. It's like someone took a red paintbrush and brushed red strokes all over it. You can see that this is staining blue here where it's been bruised before and where I broke the stem. See how green that is? Wow, that's intense. It's probably not edible, um, judging by how blue it's turning. But watch this turn blue in front of our eyes here. Now it sure seems like this would make good dye, doesn't it? I'm kind of thinking I might just take these other two crappy ones home in case it's a good dye mushroom. I really doubt that it would tan, you know, dye something that amazing color. Now I think these are butter bolets. See if they stain blue when they're bruised. It's got the yellow stem, um, the big bulbous base. Yes, it's turning green. So we'll have to confirm that when we get home, but I'm pretty sure this is a butter bolete, which is a very, very tasty edible. I just uncovered a couple of Ammonita eggs here. Um, these are probably Kokoras, but it's hard to be sure and they're very young, so I'm going to leave these to grow. I'm doing pretty good already, but I'm kind of tired. <clears throat> Suddenly just got kind of sleepy. So I'm actually just going to... I mean, this might seem kind of weird to some people, but I'm actually just going to lay down here right in the leaves and 
take a micro nap. Um, you know, it's a little chilly, I might get cold, but as soon as I get up, I'll be moving again. Yeah, here's what I like to see is these big flushes of Kokoras. This one's kind of a line, and then, then there's another line here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At least ten there. This is what I like to see, is these big flushes of Kokoras. There's like, I think there's about ten in this row right here. Most of them are probably still good. There's another row of uh, six or so, five or six. Okay, I spotted these two here and I was like, oh, bummer. Those look too old, because they really do. They look too old. And I was like, damn, maybe I'm too late to the game. And then I looked over here, boom, boom. More, and look at this lump right here. What's under that lump? Oh yeah, baby. Literally a baby, Kokora. So this one I'll definitely like it bigger, but this one is pretty much perfect. It's not totally flat yet, but it's still cupped, but it's, you know, expanding and it's big. As you can see, yeah, look at those buttes. You can see uh, by the size of my hand, these are rather large mushrooms and they're very meaty. The stalk is, is very meaty and very firm and the caps are a little bit less so, but they're still pretty substantial. I'm pretty much going to strap these on the hood of my car and drive around town. Here's today's basket. Uh, it's pretty much pretty full. Plus um, a few more bolites. And there's some more bolites in the basket too on the bottom. So yeah, I think I'll queue up a movie and uh, I got a couple of hours of processing at least. And then I got to put all this footage together and edit it into something I can post. And that's what I'm doing today.